Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you this morning, Lord, for what you've already done in our hearts. God, even for the encouragement. God, through worship and as well as sharing personal stories and situations of what you're doing in our lives, Lord, it's such an encouragement and it's so good to do. And Father, we just pray that you would... Um, you would cause this moment to stretch into our days and weeks and hours from now. That God, it wouldn't be this church on Sunday event. You know, that person said this, or that person said that, or that song did this, or that moment did something in my heart. God, it's about you. And Lord, <clears throat> help us throughout our day, um, the hours that we spend doing all kinds of things that we busy ourselves with, Lord, we just pray that you would uh, give us moments <clears throat> where we can have intimate times with you, where we would have these precious um, kisses from heaven, where we see you and we engage with you and we encounter you, where we get to dance and cry and laugh with you in Jesus' name. Amen. So God has got me <clears throat> on a bit of a journey, um, <clears throat> leaning into rest, what it looks like. I don't think our culture does rest very well at all. Rest is something that um, uh, we, we actually, even in our leisure, don't really rest well. And I think that's, that's me. I, in my leisure, I want to be doing something. I want to be... Um, <clears throat> active and engaged and and doing lots of different stuff. <laughs> Keep going. Figure it out. It's all good. Don't mind me. It's Leo and Davin. Just everybody go and look at them and say thank you guys for doing your work. <clears throat> I love it. It's so good. I've been there. I've done that. Where it's like, oh my goodness, what is happening? What is going on with that microphone? But <clears throat> it's all good. You guys can still hear me, right? Yeah, that's awesome. I don't need a microphone anyways. Yeah. I can take it right off and we'd be fine. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30. We need to, it's actually, it's funny because I was like, in preparing for this message this, uh, this morning, talking about Holy Spirit and his work uh, in, our, in our lives and the necessity and importance of it was like, actually really on my mind. And I didn't know how to tie it into what I was wanting to share, um, but God did it anyways. So, um, and Dana and I actually hadn't talked about that. <clears throat> so that was, that was pretty cool. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me. It opens with come. Right? We came to him this morning. We found rest. So, so engaging Holy Spirit in our day, engaging in, in communion with God, in conversation with him, is this thing like we were talking actually on Friday. We were talking about prayer and what it looks like. And, you know, you can be, you can be battling or, or, or contending in a situation or have, you know, stuff going on in your life. And you enter into prayer. And a lot of times we leave our prayer time, maybe even too soon, because it's just one, a one-shot prayer where it's like, God fixed this situation, right? <clears throat> and we leave actually the same as when we entered in. Have you ever entered into prayer and been frustrated or angry or, you know, and then you leave and you're, nothing's changed. Your heart still feels tense. You still feel frustrated. And, and uh, I want to challenge you with this. If that's the case, you probably weren't play, praying, you were complaining. Yeah. There's a difference. If we actually pray and we pray and we come before our Father, if we come into His presence, if we ask Holy Spirit to come and engage us, it needs to be a transaction. Something has to happen. Right? Have you ever felt like your prayers hit the ceiling and then they just come right back? They were probably complaining prayers. I'm not going to say they were or they weren't. But could be. 
And one of the things in looking at my own life, I'm like, okay, God, what happens in, in, in moments of difficulty? What are the things that really make a difference for me? And I got to say this, it's, it's when I release the things that are on me, that are coming on, that are, that are weighing in on me. I say, God, you have to take these. I have to give these to you. And if I don't give them to you, I don't know how to handle it. I don't know how to carry the weight of it. God, you take them. You take them. I give them to you. And anytime I feel that anxiety or that twinge in my, you know, and I'm like, Ugh, and you guys all know you've been there. You've had these tense situations, these complicated issues and this stuff going on and pressures of life. Say, Lord, it's yours. I give it to you. I give it to you. God, take it. Take it. Give me a view, give me a picture of heaven in 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 in, in, in the replacing that pressure. Give me a picture of heaven this morning. Seriously, if you engaged in that worship that we had this morning, any worry that was pressured on you that you even feel now was it there while you were worshiping? Right. So now it's like this. Okay. Well, how can I have that all the time? <laughs> that was awesome. Let's just do that. Right? Well, you have to. And in my own life, and this is my own personal personal walk, it's like this. Every moment I feel the twinge, every moment I feel the pressure, every moment I feel that stuff coming on, I say, God, it's yours. Yeah. I gotta give it to you. Even just do something transactional with your body to get your body engaged with to say, Jesus, here's my stuff, here's my issues, take them. I give them to you. In return, I want, <clears throat> right? We come to him, we're weary and burdened. What is he going to give us in return? Rest. He's going to give us rest. He doesn't say, he doesn't scold them. He doesn't give them all kinds of like do's and don'ts of what to do or not to do. He just says, come with your weariness and your burdens. And I'm going to, we're going to do a transaction. Prayer needs to become transactional for us. Most of the time, our prayers are uh, religious, habitual, and flippant. We're not taking them seriously. We're not contending with heaven. And if you don't have rest, if you don't find that transaction of peace where it's like, okay, here's all my tension. I'm going to give that to you and I want rest back in return. When that doesn't happen, we just go throughout our day and go, oh, I guess next week on church on Sunday, I'll get the pastor to pray for me or something or someone else more spiritual than myself. No, don't do that. It has nothing to do with this building or this place or a person. It has to be, be, it's a transaction between you and Jesus. Go to him and give him your stuff. Amen. And if you don't have peace, if you still are weary, if you still have burden, don't leave. <laughs> Jacob, what did he say? <laughs> I'm not letting go. This is just happening now. Right? Oh, that, I love that story. Jacob's whole life. Oh my goodness. That man had something in him that we could all use a little bit of. He says, take, in verse 20, take my yoke. What is a yoke? <clears throat> Any old, old timers who know what a yoke is? What was a yoke used for? Pulling? drawing you could use cattle you could use horses right <clears throat> so he says this yoke with me yoke with me there's yokes there's a single yoke right you can also tie yokes together so you can have multiple right jesus is saying listen it's not just you stop pulling together by, by yourself we can pull together i'm going to give you something there's still a, a a yoke there's still stuff that you have to go through there's a theology in the kingdom. We talked about this in men's group. But it's like there's a theology in, in the body of Christ where God is going to make everything better. He's going to come in when you invite Jesus into your life or into a situation. You know, and we even pray it. The instant someone's like, man, I got this difficulty and this issue coming on. We're like, well, in the name of Jesus, like just cast off all the restrictions and make this person everything good. And it's all going to go smooth. You're going to get healed. The job's going to be there. Your spouse is going to stop being stupid. And you're going to, you know, <clears throat> the situation's going to be fixed. And we are happily ever after. <laughs> you pray it. I pray it all the time. And I catch myself and I go, whoa. Hang on a second. Woo. Let's enter into rest here. Because the pressure is this. When the stuff doesn't happen, 
Who do you blame? <laughs> yeah, Miranda. It's like, God, why? Seriously. I don't understand. What's the point? Why? What is this? Why me? Seriously. We're so proud and arrogant. We think we're some sort of special case. You're nothing special. You're nothing special. And you know what? <clears throat> when he doesn't answer your prayer, it's an indication of you, not him. Now, I want to be careful around that. I'm not condemning anyone. I don't want to bring condemnation. I want to bring a recognition that he's not the wrong one in the transaction. And that's sometimes who's been frustrated by that fact. <clears throat> I'm always wrong. He's always right. <laughs> but I'm ticked off and frustrated by the whole thing. This is stupid. <laughs> Come on. This needs to be simpler. <clears throat> he's like, give it to me. Give it to me. Come into that place. Yoke yourself with this truth. I will not leave until I receive the blessing. And the blessing, look at Jacob's life. It's a great example, Matt. I love it. Jacob's life is a great example. Was his life perfect? Did he have everything perfect? Do a short read of his life just to highlight all the crazy stuff that happened to him. Look at the body of Christ in history. Look at those, those, those that God loved the most, loved so much that he, pre he preserved their stories in, in, in writing for us as scripture. How many of them was everything perfect? How many of them did he answer all of their, prayer, their selfish prayers that were like, just fix it? <laughs> Elijah. The story of Elijah. He's like, man, this dude is serious. Like, God basically anointed him in such a way that any, pretty much anything he said happened. Ooh, doggy. <laughs> Just think about it practically. When someone ticks you off, and you say what? Huh. That would happen. <sighs> There's some intensity. <clears throat> Elijah, right? He has this whole... This whole battle with the, 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 the prophets of, of, uh, of Baal, right? And I'm not going to go through the whole story, but this whole big, massive thing happens, right? <laughs> it's like the next day, right? Scene, end, victory. The next day. <sighs> just kill me. <laughs> it's too much. Like he just saw, it's crazy. He just saw the fire of God come down on his command, he spoke the word and it happened. <laughs> and now he's running for his life like a scared bratty little boy. He should have stood up to Jezebel and said, I'll call fire down on you right now. You back off. But where was he? Right? Difficulty. Depression. He was... Anyways, I don't want to go too far into those stories. But look at the stories in history. Where did God take his people? Through. All kinds of stuff. Those he loved the most. David, Moses, Joseph, Abraham. Right? You list these guys from scripture who went through. These are great men of faith. And they went through all kinds of horrible things. I'll say this. Some of them way worse than what you have ever or will ever experience in your life. <clears throat> His yoke is easy and his burden is light. He says in the end of verse 29. Uh, and you will find rest for your soul. What is that place where we can find rest? <clears throat> uh, Philippians 3, 7. Oh my goodness, five minutes. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> uh, yeah. You're well done roast this afternoon? Good. Um, <laughs> Philippians 3, uh, verse uh, 7 to 11. Um, boy... Uh, whatever we, uh, whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. And the, re the reason why this is important is we need to understand most of the stuff, the reason why you have tension and difficulty in your life is you're holding on to something that you never designed to hold on to. Paul says here, he's like, I consider it all a negative, a net negative. Add it all up. We know Paul's life. He, he was Pharisee among Pharisees. He was the most religious among the religious. He was, he was a leader. He was affluent. He had influence. He looks at it all and he goes, net zero. 
It's all actually not just zero, it's actually negative. It's less than zero. For why? For the sake of knowing Christ. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having the righteousness of my own that comes from the law, right? You doing things right, that perfection thing, that perfection idea. It's like, I want to be perfect. You don't want to be perfect. And you'll never be perfect, but you don't want your perfection. It's garbage. It's garbage. I don't care about doing things right. I've said this all the time. It's like, I don't care whether you do things right. I care that there's a willing heart and a willing spirit. I can work with someone who's willing. I can work with that. But someone who's like, I, and you've all worked with that person who's like, I know it. I'm right. I'm right. We're doing it this way. Okay. Right? It's hard to work with that. I want to gain Christ. Be found in him. Not having the righteousness of my own that comes from the law. But that which is through faith in Christ and the righteousness that comes from God. Here's the thing. You being a good person, net zero. All of the good that Aspen Ridge can do, that you can do as an individual, is net zero. It means nothing. You will never be good enough. You will never be, do enough things. It will never be enough. What is, what, is, what is enough? Except for faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. This morning when I hear testimonies of like what hearing God's voice is doing for some of you, there's two things that are happening. The reason why I get emotional is, is this. First of all, I'm so excited that I get to be a part of a place that introduces people to Jesus. That's the coolest thing in the world. That is the coolest thing in the world. I love seeing people who are like, have, have this wonderful base of like knowing God their entire lives and then getting introduced to him on another level. I'm not saying you didn't know him before. That's not what I'm saying. Don't hear me. I'm saying, whoa, we just leveled up. Whoa, something just changed. Right? It's like Mario Brothers when you hit the mushroom. (laughs) (laughs) Right? You remember that feeling playing that little Nintendo game? And you're like, it's on now. Right? When you're little, you're like running for your life. Right? You're running scared. You're like, oh, doggy. Anything happens, I'm done. You level up and you're like, all right, let's do this. And then, well, this would be the, and then the, 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 what was it? The firepower? (laughs) (laughs) Nintendo. <clears throat> that wasn't in my notes, I promise. Verse 10, I want to know Christ. Oh, knowing Him. Knowing Him, I want to know Him. Yes, to know the power of His resurrection and, and participation of His suffering. We want to know Him. Here's the thing. We all want to have a good testimony, but we don't want to walk through what's necessary for that testimony to be walked out. Right. The power of his resurrection, yes. We're like, okay, power, resurrection, uh, participation in suffering, becoming like a man's death. And so, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Just skip that part. <laughs> <laughs> but we do, we mentally don't think, I need to die. Right. My righteousness is filthy rags. It doesn't matter what I can do or not do. I don't care what the world is doing and what's going on in the political realm. You know what the one key is? Know him. Do you know what's going to solve the issues in our world? It's not a different political leader. It's not a political move. It's nothing like that. And you guys know me. I get political way too much. Right? You know my heart on that. I think we need to, as believers, be active in, 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 in a measure in those, in those areas. Right? But that's not, you will not be the savior for your country. You won't. You won't be the savior for your family, parents, grandparents, and close to home. Your kids are not yours. They're not yours. They're his. What's that? Some of us think, thank God. Okay, good. (laughs) Who are you? Get out of my vehicle. (laughs) Pastor said I don't have to take you home. (laughs) 
You're not lying. That's how rumors start. That's how rumors start. It's online now. Um, <clears throat> but some of us in our relationships, we possess that relationship and take on the responsibility of the whole thing, and it's like it's not yours. Your spouse is not yours. Your job is not to fix your spouse and make them better. I know, I tried. <laughs> didn't work. It didn't work. She can testify. Then I found Jesus. Then I found Jesus. <laughs> <clears throat> Participate in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. What did Jesus say? Where, where did we hear this? He's humble in heart, right? That was in Matthew. I am gentle and humble. I'm going to go to the place of death. I'm going to go to the low place. I'm going to serve. I'm going to do whatever I can. So uh, why? So that I'm not exalted. Here's the thing. Someone who's secure in who they are doesn't need someone to tell them they're doing a good job. They don't need affirmation. When you feel like someone gave someone else a compliment and it was your work and that goes, <clears throat> you're an insecure. You actually don't, you're, you, you don't know who you are. But when someone else can take credit for what you did, here's the cool part. The hearing God's voice thing. The second thing, and I never told you the second thing that I loved about that, what's going on right now, is Dana and I, this is the first time since we've been here, we're not leading it. That gets me so excited. I'm like, this is sweet. And I mean that in like, literally, this is a sweet spot where it's like, it's not on me. I say no to things as a pastor that I probably should or could do. Some things I should say no to that I don't. <laughs> Let's be honest. But there's areas where we need to begin to rise up in. We need to be right. Guys, and I've, I said this a long time ago, but I'll say it to you because there's some new faces here. When revival hits Athabasca, you guys are my leadership team. Because when we have a thousand people in this congregation, I'm going to need all 60 of you. Because I won't be able to do it on my own. I won't be able to. You guys are the leadership team. Start to lead. Start by hearing his voice. Start by engaging with him. When you engage with him, now you take the issue. You do that transactional thing in Matthew. You say, okay, I'm going to come to him. I got all this stuff, but now I know how to hear him. I know how to see him. You know what's another powerful one? You think back to places of wounding in your life, and you ask him, Jesus, where were you in that moment? Yeah. Telling you, you want some healing? It's powerful. Jesus, oh, where were you? What were you doing? And he shows you himself. He reveals himself to you in the midst of that. It's powerful. Oh, boy. Song of Song 5, 10 to 16. This is what we sang this morning. This morning, He alone is my beloved. He shines in dazzling splendor, yet is still approachable. Isn't he so approachable? So approachable. So easy to just come to. Without equal, as he stands above all others, standing among 10,000. Uh, the way he leads is divine. His leadership so pure and dignified as he wears his crown of gold. Upon this crown, there are letters uh, uh, of black, of letters of black written on backgrounds of glory. He sees everything with pure understanding. Uh, how beautiful his insights without distortion. His eyes rest upon the, the, the fullness of the river of revelation, flowing so clean and pure. Look at his gentle face and see such, such fu fullness of emotion. Like a lovely garden, where fragrant spices grow, what a man. What a man. What a God we serve. He's so approachable. He's so relatable. He's so gentle and kind. And he's so beautiful. No one speaks words so anointed as, the, as this one. Words that both pierce and heal. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. He can cut right through, right? Yeah. If you've ever heard him give a word of correction... He leaves you laughing and smiling. <laughs> Dana and I do. It's like, I've told you that. <laughs> I've been telling you that for years. For years. Yeah, but he told me. He told me while he was looking at me, and it's different. Where was I? 
I don't even know where it was. Uh, words that both pierce and heal. Words like lilies dripping with myrrh. Oh, I want to get into this deeper, but we don't have time. Go home and study this verse, this passage. 10 to 16, Song of Solomon 5. See how his hands hold unlimited power, but he never uses it in anger. For he is always holy, displaying his glory. His innermost place is at work as a work of art. So beautiful and bright. How magnificent and noble is this one. Covered in majesty. He's steadfast in all that he does. His ways are the ways of righteousness based on truth and holiness. None can rival him, but all will be amazed by him. Oh. None can rival him, but all will be amazed by him. Every knee will bow. Hmm. <coughs> Most sweet are his kisses, even his whispers of love. Right? That's hearing God's voice right there in a nutshell. His words, his kisses, his whispers. He is delightful in every way and perfect from every viewpoint. If you ask me why I love him, why I love him so, O brides to be, it is because <clears throat> there is none like him to me. Everything about him fills me with holy desire. And now he is my beloved, my friend forever. The daughters of Jerusalem ask the Shulamite bride about her lover. And this was her response in this passage. Declaring the beauty of Jesus. Declaring how great he is. De declaring how wonderful he is. She wants nothing more. And, and our hearts and our your soul desires the same thing. To just gaze on him. And to love him. The attributes that are talked about in here is God's leadership. He is sovereign over everything. Everything. There is nothing that's outside of his purview. But he has dedication to you, his church, his bride. He is so committed to you. He is more committed to you than you are to you. He has infinite knowledge and wisdom and understanding and discernment. You can go to him and ask him for help. Ask him for help in problems. Ask him for help in difficult situations. He has so many emotions for you. His emotional makeup is very complex. But it's lovely. It's lovely. He has so many emotions towards you. His words... He wants to speak to you. He's waiting for an opportunity sometimes for you to just shut up. We get into prayer. We get into these modes where we think it needs to be a certain way and we don't stop and listen. Why was it important this morning in worship that we stop and had silence? Because enough of my voice, enough of my doing, all the doing that we can do, we just want to be still in a moment in reverence and honor. Allow him to have his way. I said it this morning. He's far more silent. Sometimes he just wants to be with you. This is a struggle for me personally. Sitting in silence is not fun for me. It's like it isn't. <laughs> and I'm learning to just sit. Okay, Lord, I'm just going to sit and be silent with you. I'm going to sit and listen to your voice. <clears throat> yeah, to allow the spirit to flow, guy. Yeah. He has, there's divine activity in his hands. There's one part in the, in the Song of Solomon where, where she describes his, his right hand and his left hand. And the one hand is behind her and the other hand is in front of her. I love that picture. The things you don't see that God is doing to sustain and, and support you and to hold you up and to preserve you. There's things we can see, but there's so much that we can't see. He's always, he's always there. 
There's divine activity all around us. He has tender compassion. He walks uh, uh, the Lord, uh, the Lord's walk, the Lord's walk and administration of His purposes. What He has in His mind to do will be done. Oh, there's so much confidence there. God, I can trust you that your plan will be <clears throat> will be accomplished. And he wants to use you. He wants to partner with you. He wants to, to commission you a part of his plan to work out the administration of his plan on the earth. He won't do it without you. He could. People are like, well, God doesn't. No, he doesn't need you. He wants you. But he doesn't need you. God doesn't need anything. If he needed something, he wouldn't be God. <clears throat> There's intimacy from his mouth through his words. His beauty. And at the end, her declaration of his love. Her beloved friend. My friend forever. This morning as we worshipped, and even in the testimonies, <clears throat> There's a sweet presence of God in, in, in this room today. And I want to just take some time, and we're just going to pray. Um, maybe a little while after I'm done praying, we'll put on some music. We're just going to take a couple more moments. And I know people have places to go and stuff to do, and that's fine. But I want us to do a divine transaction. Jesus in Matthew, he said, listen, come and give me your weariness, your burdens, and take rest. This morning, I want to do that. So you can stand or you can sit, whatever you want to do. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we love you this morning. <clears throat> and Lord, we want to accept your invitation to bring the stuff that we carry. God, there's health issues, there's relational issues, there's work issues, there's pressure family and friends and life, societal pressure from what's going on in our, in our world. And God, we want to give it to you this morning. Because we want your rest. We want your peace. Father, help us to release these things we've held on so tightly into your hands and into your care. God, help us to trust you. Help us to trust you that it's in the middle of the problem, but with you is the best place to be. God, if all the problems were removed, if all of the, the pressure and situations were removed and we didn't have you, we would still be at a net zero. Father, we just want to be where you are. Resting on your love and your gentleness. Your good plans for us. Father, take it this morning. Take the worries. Take the pressure. We give them to you. <clears throat> and Father, when we're so prone to pick these pressures back up, to pick up the pressure and the, and the burdens, Lord, remind us that we've given them to you. Remind us to just give them right back. Lord, we thank you that you've designed and built the human frame to be yoked with you. Lord, we were 
never created or designed to do things alone. You created Adam and you said it's not good for him to be alone. That God, sometimes it's our brothers and sisters, our family and friends that are around us that need to come in and give us support. Thank you.